we, uh, hey, today is a, obviously such a, such a significant day that we're, um, that we are expecting, and uh, just, it's such a great day to talk about what Jesus did as he's, as we're coming up to Easter. Um, this week we are talking about uh, the Good Shepherd um, in, in youth, um, and how, and how God is, uh, how God is a good shepherd uh, to us, and it's a, uh, it's in John 10, and Jesus says, um, the sheep hear my voice, um, and uh, they, they, when, I, when I call them, they come out. Um, and uh, it actually goes back to a passage in Numbers 27. And in this passage, uh, Moses actually uses the exact same words, and he says, one day there's someone who my sheep will come out. And it's the exact same wording. And it's meant to draw back that, uh, that Joshua was the person that fulfilled that role. And Joshua's name in Greek was Jesus. I read that this week, and I was like, like if, you, if you transliterate it, it actually shows the name Jesus in there. Um, that the whole Old Testament, um, in its entirety, uh, points to a future shepherd. Man, there was these distorted images of shepherds um, all throughout the Old Testament that told us about a future one that one day was going to come. Um, man, by David, I got to see a, a, a less distorted, but, but, but still distorted by sin image of what a good shepherd was going to do one day. How he was going to care for me, how he was going to protect me, how he was going to provide for me, even when it was inconvenient. And how he was eventually, as we go up to Easter this week, man, how he was going to lay his life down and provide for me eternally. Um, that is what we get to celebrate today, the fact that our good shepherd has come. Um, let us, let us, let's pray as we enter into worship to celebrate um, and honor that God who, um, who stepped down from, from, from heaven and from eternity to come um, and be with us and sacrifice for us, the good shepherd. God, today uh, we pray and thank you for the work that you did. We thank you for the fact that, um, that you looked over all of Jerusalem um, and, you, and you looked over the city um, looked into the, the death that you knew was coming and that you would lay your life down for us and you willingly walked into it. God, we, we thank you that today, because you're our good shepherd, we shall not want. Um, you provide everything that we need, God. Um, eternally through, through the cross, um, physically because you're still with us and in the Holy Spirit providing uh, means for us to live each day in the breath in our lungs right now, Jesus. God, we um, today as we seek to worship you and honor you today, um, would you guide us um, to do that the best way possible? Um, would you uh, change hearts and minds uh, to, uh, to follow you greater today? Um, we love you, Jesus. We pray all of these things in the powerful name that can actually change circumstances. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sound up on this. There we go. All right, it's good to see everybody here today. We're going to get started in just a minute. I just wanted to make sure we kind of put out an email, but if you haven't looked over our new mission wall, you really need to look that over. Um, actually, I will tell you that we ordered that thing. It took about two and a half months or so to get it in. Uh, it was made in Russia. Uh, and so we didn't know if we were going to get it or not, and William spent a whole lot of time putting it up. We made that information. If you read all those things on it, you'll know more than most people know about missions and Baptist church work. And so uh, we'd like for you to look that over sometime today. And then we'd also like to say that one of the things I've had out here for a while, I keep forgetting to mention, is spiritual gift tests. If you'd go by and get those sometime and take them, we're trying to get everybody's spiritual gifts so we can plug you in. And uh, we just want to abuse and use you uh, so that we're equal opportunity abusers. All right? We want to find a place to plug you in that you can serve God in this church. And so that's what, what we're looking for. And if you'd fill, take those and fill them out and bring them back to me, we'll score them and give you about a six, seven-page report of what it says. And what everybody gets afraid of is they can flunk it. You cannot flunk a gift test. It is impossible. The only way you can flunk it is if you don't fill it out, all right? So don't worry about that. We'll say, my gift may not be, well, that's the reason they're gifts. They're, they're according to you and who you are. They're not about everybody else. It's about you. So if you'd fill them out, it's a lot of good information when you get it, and so we'd appreciate that. And then uh, I want to just mention if there's any visitors here today, if you'd raise your hand. I know we got some. We have some from Alaska that were at our church at Lighthouse, and uh, praise God for them, the Lunchfords, and as they're here with us today. Any other ones? I'm kind of hard to see today. They put some new lighting in, so it's 
kind of like being on TV. I can't see all your faces, which I haven't been able to see your mouths for months, and now I can't see your faces. <laughs> so uh, we just want to welcome everybody here today. We want to ask you guys to go at the end of the service over to the side. Uh, we'd like to give you a bag to remember us by with some gifts from us uh, to remember your visit with us. And we had a good time with them last night, went out to eat and talked quite a bit, and got caught up on a bunch of stuff, and so we appreciate you guys being here. The rest of you, we appreciate you being here today. And uh, I, again, I want to say, if you feel like the Lord's leading you to come down and pray for yourself or somebody else or grab somebody else to pray with, I'd ask you just to come down and do it any time during the service, during the song service, during the preaching. It doesn't bother me at all if people come down to pray during the preaching. Matter of fact, it's kind of like saying sick them to a dog. And so uh, it, it won't hurt me at all. And we just want to have a good time in the Lord today. We're going to have a short video about Annie Armstrong offering, and then Corey's going to lead us today. So with the video. When you and your church give, you send hope. In small towns, big cities, college campuses, God uses your sacrificial giving and your partnership with the North American Mission Board to make this happen over and over again. And at NAM, we think it's important for you to know how God uses your gifts to produce results. Southern Baptist churches like yours fund North American missions through two primary sources. First, the cooperative program. Your gifts to the CP typically come from your church budget and then go directly to your state convention. Each state then sends a portion of that money to the SBC Executive Committee, and from there, more than half of CP goes to the International Mission Board. NAM, SBC seminaries, and other entities receive a percentage as well. NAM receives 22.79% of cooperative program dollars. We use those funds to support evangelism events, to support ministry centers and missionaries, to endorse chaplains, and for operations. Altogether, those funds make up 35% of our budget. But the largest part of NAM's budget, 50%, comes from the Annie Armstrong Easter offering for North American Missions. More than 100 years ago, this offering was named for a bold missions advocate who rallied SBC churches in support of missionaries. Today, Southern Baptists have thousands of missionaries serving in North America. They are spreading the gospel through Sin Network, our church planning arm, and Sin Relief, our evangelistic compassion ministry area. And when you give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering through special offerings, your church budget, or directly to NAM, you're helping these missionaries by providing the fuel to assess, train, coach, and care for them. Together with you and your church, every day we are sending hope. All right. Good morning. Oh, are you ready to praise the king today? Yeah. This is the day that he walked into, well, he didn't walk, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Amen? But he was the triumphant king. And uh, so let's, let's worship Jesus today as he, as he uh, this is the day we celebrate that he went, he began his journey to the cross um, and to Jerusalem. Y'all stand with me and we'll, we'll worship. What? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? His love is mighty, so much stronger, King of glory. King above all kings. Who shakes the whole world with holy thunder? And leaves us breathless and all in wonder. King of glory, King above all kings. Yes.
back into order. Thank you. 
tell you what. And Jesus, um, he said in part of the scripture passage we're going to read today, that uh, he says, you know, if, if you people don't praise me, then the rocks will cry out. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so we don't want to let the rocks cry out louder than we do today. Yeah. All right? But we want to join all creation in a symphony of praise. Amen? Yeah. And so that's, and that's why we come to church. You know, part of being united, um, that word um, symphony is the, like a, a strong melody and harmony that's tied together. And, it, and, and, and sounds like a symphony of, of instruments that play together. That's the unity of the church. And that's why we stand today. And that's why we stand up and we can praise God. And we can worship God together. And we need to value that and love that, all right? And I want to encourage you today to, to, to as we sing, um, to think about that you're not alone. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel alone sometimes, right? We're in our faith. But we're not alone ever, all right? And... Um, and even though we go through hard things, hey, we have brothers and sisters, it says in Peter, that are all over the world that suffer the same things, and maybe even worse than we do. And so we need to, we need to lift each other up. And we're gonna, we sang a song called Promises last week. We thought we've been singing it, so we want to sing it again this week and we uh, learn it. So if you haven't, we weren't here last week, you get a new song. Let me get my, get my rhythm here, sorry.
the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he's my son. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, Thank you. 
Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I see? Hallelujah. Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine, I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine what all I will do is forever, forever worship you. Only imagine, only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel, will I dance for you Jesus? Or in all of you be still, will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, well, yeah, I can only imagine. When all I would do is forever, forever worship you.
Amen. Amen. That was wonderful. You guys did a great job. If you would, please pray with me. Father God, on this Palm Sunday as we come before you, we, we thank you, Father, as, as we try to imagine what it would be like, as we try to uh, some way see in our eye and our heart what it's going to be like when we do stand before you in heaven. But Father, we cannot imagine it. Uh, we cannot do it justice. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us, Father God, to come to you, to accept you as our Lord and Savior. And I pray, Father, that if anyone in here today does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, today would be the day that you could go to glory with us, Father God. Uh, Father, I pray that, uh, as you, that you be with the pastor as he brings the sermon today of the familiar story uh, of Jesus coming in on the donkey. And Father God, I just, I just pray that, Father God, you would touch each and every one of us in your own way with this message, Father. And I just lift the pastor up to you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Brett. I also want to thank the praise team this morning and and I thank Heather for signing and Bailey for singing. and uh, A great time in the Lord. Makes it a little easier to preach whenever you're getting ready to preach because of what happens before, and that's worshiping God. We're going to be talking about that some today. How many of you gave out these cards this week? They're sitting all over the pews. Grab some more and replenish. All right, see hands all over the place. Need more of you to start giving them out. This is the easiest way to testify than anything else you'll ever do. You don't have to really ask them to church or anything else, but you could do. If you ever had any hard questions, would you go to that website about the Bible, and it will answer them for you. Great videos on there if you've never went there. And uh, give those out. Uh, wherever. Again, don't give them out at a restaurant unless you tip 20% or more. We don't want people thinking stiff and stingy or cheap. All right? So, uh, but give them out if you would. We appreciate that. And then also, as you all know, we're saturating our community in the next few months, we've already got about 2,500 uh, to 3,000 homes hit, and we've got about 12,000 more to do. Don't let that scare you. We've got several dates we're going to do it in. April the 17th is one of those. And next Sunday, we're going to be having communion. It'll be the first time in about a year. Uh, and so uh, we're not going to set it up as usual. We're going to have tables set up, and you'll just pick it up as you go, and at the end of the service, we'll take it together. All right? And so... I'll remind you that we have a reminder set out this week. So I just want to say that God's been blessing. There's been a lot of junk going on. Satan's been attacking like he always attacks, and that's just part of it. Sometimes we need to understand that. Instead of getting down, we just need to get up and, and get ready for what God has for us and take the bull by the horn, so to speak, grab the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I need your help, and uh, I know that you've got this. And so today we're going to be looking at the triumphant entry and we're going to be in Luke 19, starting in verse 36 through 44. I'm going to talk about quite a bit of this and talk about before and after this, all right? It says, as he rode along, we all know what happened before this, he told his disciples to go get a coat that would be tied up. And when the owner asked, who needed a coat, he just says, why are you taking my coat? He says, to tell them the Lord needs it. I want to ask you today, very first of all, if the Lord tells you, I need whatever it is in your life, are you willing just to give it over without saying a word? It's a tough one, isn't it? What if the Lord is asking you to give up something that you hold very dearly? Are you willing to give it up? What if the Lord is saying, I want 100% of your life, not the percentage you're giving right now? Are we willing to give it? up to him so as he rode along on that coat that had never been ridden before a lot can go there too i broke donkeys and ponies when i was a kid let me tell you you just don't get on them and ride them it doesn't happen that way but when the savior gets on something unbroken it becomes tame and when the Savior gets hold of a broken life, it becomes mended again. So as he rose along, as he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. Could you imagine what that would have been like? Here's what you have to realize up to this point. People came to hear Christ speak. They came to 
actually be around and crowd around him to some degree to hear him speak. But there was far more that were trying to figure out how to get rid of him. And so as he's riding down the road, and now for one of the first times we find that they're actually going to worship him, and we're going to talk some about that today. And when he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all the followers, listen to this, began to shout and sing. They weren't Baptist. Because they began to shout and sing. You know, one of the problems today is that we're afraid to shout and sing to the Lord. One of the problems is we've had people telling us for generations now, oh, you can't do that. I want to tell you God's Word says that's what it's supposed to do. Do a word search about shouting out to the Lord. You'll find it's everywhere. You find a word search about lifting holy hands before God. Listen, we're a bunch of flat hand Baptists sitting on our hands so they won't go up in the air. You and I need to get excited about the things of God. I want to tell you, if you get excited about anything else in your life, I want to tell you it's blaspheming if you don't get excited about God. If you can stand up and yell at a dumb TV about a dumb game that's being played about people from people you don't even know, you ought to be able to praise the Lord like never before. You see, the problem is we've been told that that's not right. We've been told... Folks, I want to ask you who's telling you it's not Jesus Christ, it's not the Holy Spirit, and it's not God himself. It's the world and Satan in the world. And what we need to understand is we need to worship God because they began to shout and sing as they walked along praising God for all the wonderful miracles they have seen. I know there's some of us right now that are saying, well, I really haven't seen any miracles, baloney. If you know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, that's your first miracle. Because he took somebody bound for hell and gave them the eternity in heaven. That's your first one. You know what the problem is? We quit looking for miracles. We quit looking for the hand of God working in our lives and what the hand of God is doing in our presence. We quit thanking God for everything he does. We quit thanking God for all the little things so we don't even recognize the big things anymore. They walked along and started shouting and praising him because of all the miracles that they had seen. Go on and say, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now I want you to, I want you to think about this. Think about that crowd. Think about it, if Jesus right on. Think about that crowd. A lot bigger than us in here, of course. Thousands of people were gathered around him and they're praising him and singing out to him. And now what's going to happen is some religious leaders are going to try to get involved. You know what I don't like? I don't like religious people. I like godly people. I don't like religious people because religious people think they're something that they're not. I like people that are godly and you can see what they got. We go on and verse 39 it says but some of the Pharisees among the crowd said teacher rebuke your followers for th saying things like that. Oh you know it's like the people in the church say oh you shouldn't sing no songs. People in the church oh you shouldn't raise your hand. People saying in the church you shouldn't clap. People saying in the church you shouldn't shout. Oh, this is a solemn time. I want to tell you something. Worshiping is a solemn time, but it's a rejoicing time too. And we need to learn to rejoice in the Lord. We used to sing years and years ago when I was a kid, we sang rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, but we had to do it without rejoicing. I just don't know if that was right. I remember singing, you know, and when you were a kid, when I grew up in church, you could do all the things like making signs and jumping and stuff, and everybody thought it was cool. And then as you got to be a teenager, it said, don't act like a fool. Sit down and shut up. Folks, I want to tell you what we need to understand is we worship God, not somebody else. We worship God and not this building. It isn't this building. We're the church. 
And we need to worship him like never before. So those Pharisees came along and said, man, you need to stop them from saying this. You need to stop them from doing this. That's like the church lady on Saturday Night Live. Well, I didn't think it was wrong. And if you don't know that, you need to go look up a clip, all right? So, in verse 40 it said, he replied, and I want you to listen. If they kept quiet, Corey mentioned this one, the stones along the road would burst out into cheers. How are you and I really supposed to worship God? For one thing, we've got to realize who God is. And we've got to understand that he is our Savior. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's a great I am. He's a creator. He is everything. Jesus said, if they didn't, these rocks would all cry out. If God can make a dumb rock cry out, he could make a dumb pew setter cry out too. You see, we need to understand it's about glorifying God. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's all about him. And it always will be. He said, these rocks would cry out if they didn't cry out. And we find so many people, that's just not dignified. Well, maybe you're so dignified you can't be glorified. Somebody might have took offense to that if you did. Good. Verse 41 says, But as he came closer to Jerusalem, as he's overlooking and comes closer to Jerusalem, and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. You see, he began to weep. There's another time we see in the Bible he began to weep, and it was when Lazarus was dead. And he wept, but it wasn't because Lazarus was dead. It was because of their unbelief in who God was and that he could raise him from the dead. And now as he's getting ready to go into the city, he understands what's going to happen. They don't understand it. But he understands what's going to happen. And as he's going into the city, he, he begins to weep. And he weeps because here's Jerusalem, God's chosen people that would not serve God, that we're going to put him on a cross, that he would die for our sins. He had to die a cruel death for you and I. And we'll talk about that some next Sunday. But as he was looking at that, he was saying, I had to do this. I'm having to do this. And you don't understand what I'm getting ready to do. Verse 42 says, how I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. He's talking to those that followed him. He talks to those that was close to him. He's talking to those that knew him. He's talking to those that served him. He's talking to those who were with him day and night. He's talking to all those that followed along after him. He's saying, I wish of all people you would understand. i got to believe today God's looking down at our congregations and our churches, and I believe he's saying the same thing today. I wish of all people you would understand. You've had enough Bible knowledge. You've had enough teaching. You've even had enough discipleship, although I'm a firm believer we need much more. Of all people, why, why don't you understand? You see, I believe once we finally understand who Christ is in our life, it will change us like nothing else can ever change us. And when God says the rocks would cry out if they didn't, I believe that our hearts will be crying out for him. It says, but now it is too late, and peace is hidden from your eyes. He goes on to say, before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. I want to tell you right now what Satan's going to do is pull it out. Well, that's not happening. I'm going to explain to you how it's happening in just a minute. They will crush 
you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemy will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. See, we act like, well, this isn't happening. This didn't happen. Wait a second. When's all that? Let me tell you what's happened. Separation of the family is killing our country. Between divorce, fatherless children that aren't in the home to help raise them, between all the other things that go on, between the abuse of drugs and alcohol, between the sexual abuse because of other things, everything else going on in the world, I want to tell you something. Satan is having victories over not only the world, but over the church today too. Junk is happening in the church that happens in the world that should never be that way, and it's because we are being visited by the enemy, and the enemy is on attack all the time. And the only way to get through that is to hold God close and allow God to hold you close and to stay within his will and under his umbrella of protection so that God might protect us. You see, it's time. You say, all oh, those things aren't happening. I want to tell you, rights are getting taken away all the time. Abortions are running rapid and children are being killed. You see, the problem is today that we as Christians find to say, that may happen out there, but it's not happening in my life. It's not happening in my family's life. It's not happening in my church's life because I know Jesus and I want to serve him. You see, we have to understand that we have to start taking back some of the ground that's been taken away. And the only way to do that is get closer to God. As it says in James, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. And when we draw close to God, we'll see the hand of God working like never before. I'm not going to use that last verse. We have one in Zechariah 9.9 where it even said 500 years before that Christ was going to be riding in on a donkey. 500 years before. If Bible prophecy, which it has, has prophesied for hundreds of years and every fact about Jesus has been true, in which it is, then don't you think God can't handle what's going on in your my life. Don't you think that God can't take care of you? Don't you think that God won't do what he needs to do? The question is, are you willing to live for our master? That's the question. Are we willing to live for him? You see, the problem is always that way. Jesus, as he wept about the city, he understood what was going to happen that week. You see, that was on a Sunday, and the next day, he was going to go into the temple to teach. And folks, boy, people mess this up too, I really believe. There were money changers, people making their living in the temple courts. They were making their living there, see? We get people all the time, well, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. Everything that we do around the church or something, they collect money or donations, so we still can be, become a 501c3, a nonprofit corporation. All those things are to further the kingdom and further God's work. What they were doing is furthering their own kingdom and their own livelihood. And so they were selling in the temple not to glorify God, but to glorify self. And any time that you and I want to glorify self, we are out of the will of God. Because our lives are only about glorifying God. And then on the second day, he went to the Mount of Olives and he prayed sweat drops of blood. He even prayed, Father, if it's your will, don't let me go through this. On Wednesday, we have no account of what happened. I really believe he had such two such days were so hard on him, he needed to rest. On Thursday was the Passover the Lord's Supper. And then Friday, he would endure the cross. Jesus Christ, who never knew sin, who never sinned, 
And I want to tell you, some of these pagans that talk about that Jesus was married and had kids and Jesus did this and Jesus did that, I don't have any word from them. Heresy is a nice word. Idiots to me are more appropriate. I want to tell you, my God was without sin or he could have never been the perfect sacrifice. And he died on that cross of Mount Calvary that you and I might be saved. And if you and I would receive him in our heart, he'll come into our heart, forgive us of our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not just some, all. He will make the slate clean that you and I can spend eternity with him in heaven. Jesus looked at the city and began to weep. I want to ask you, is he looking at my life and your life today, and is, does he begin to weep? Why? Because we're not sold out to God. Because we're not all in for him. Because we're holding back the things that belong to him. I want to ask you, just very simply, when God looks at me and God looks at you, what does he truly see? He's not seeing the facade that we set up. He's not seeing the things that we tell other people. He is seeing the heart. He is seeing the mind and he's seeing the thoughts. And he knows them. And the only way to make that right with him is to come to him and say, God, forgive me. I've sinned against you and you alone, O Lord. Just as David the psalmist said. Don't you think it's time that we finally say, enough's enough? Don't you think it's time that we finally said, Lord, I want more of you than anything else. And Lord, I, I don't want to be the same the rest of my life. I want you to change me from the inside out. Lord, I want your hand to be on me. And we may even remember times when the hand of the Lord was on us, but yet, Right now, we feel like it's not. Oh, I want to tell you, God's yearning for you to come back to him. I believe that there's sorrow by him and there's tears for the state of not only this world, but the state of the church today, which we are the church. Are there things in your life that don't belong to him? Are you willing to come and give them over to him? Are there things in your life that nobody else knows about? But God does. Are you willing to give them over to him today? You see, we have to become right with God so that we can be vessels totally used by God. Are we willing to do that today? We're going to have a time of invitation in just a moment. We're going to ask you to come. Maybe you need to rededicate that life. Maybe you need to just come and pray. Maybe you have some family members that aren't saved and you need to pray that maybe somebody would give them one of these cards we carry around and maybe they'd even go to one of those sites and they'd come to know Jesus. Or maybe that you might be able to tell them about Jesus even though you've done it many times and they might finally say, yes, I need him. Maybe there's some things going on in your life that nobody else can do anything about but Almighty God. Would you come and give those over to him today? Maybe you have family members, maybe you have friends, maybe there's others. Maybe you just need to get right with God today. Oh, I want to tell you the thing, great thing about it, no matter what it is, God's waiting for you to come back to him. That we might be made whole in him. Whatever it is today, I'm going to ask you to come. Would you allow God to do a work in you? Would you allow God to do a work in our church? Next Sunday's Easter Sunday. There's people that come on Easter Sunday that don't come any other time. Would you be praying that next week, that when they come, it would change their lives, and they'll come more than just next Sunday? Maybe you're here today, and you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask you to come and ask him to come into your heart. You know you've sinned, and you've sinned against God. Would you come and invite him into your heart? I'd love to pray with you. Just talk you through it, pray with you, because God will do what he says he'll do, and he'll forgive you of your sins.
that you might spend eternity with him in heaven. Whatever the reason is today, maybe you need to make this church your church home. Would you do whatever the Holy Spirit is asking you to do today? Would you obey the Holy Spirit promptly and come? I'm going to ask everyone to stand. I'm just going to lead us in a short word of prayer. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and start coming right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, we thank you for our Savior that died on the cross for our sins. And Father, I pray today that you would help us, Lord, that we won't hold back for any reason. Father, that we'll come today and give you all the glory and give you all the praise. Father, I pray that you don't have to make the rocks cry out, that we'll cry out to you today. Father, I pray for this time that we won't hold back. But Father, we'll follow you and be obedient to you today. Father, we just want to praise you today, give you the glory. Bless this time. Father, I pray right now, a hedge of protection be put around this place and Satan won't be able to rob the victory because you are victorious, O oh Lord. Father, we turn this time over to you. And these things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Would you step out and come as we sing? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In pity angels beheld him and he came from the world of life to comfort him in the sorrows he bore for my soul that night how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall end You need to come today. I want to just sing that again. Sing it like you mean it, would you? You don't have to whisper it. You can sing it out. Would you just sing it from the heart today? If you need to come, would you just still come? This altar is for all of us. It belongs to God. If God's tugging on your heartstrings, I would ask you to please come. He's the only thing, the only one that can make a difference in our lives. So would you come as we sing? He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. and glory his face I at last shall see will be 
I'm going to make this real quick. Check everything out in your bulletin. I'd like for you to check that wall out if you would before you leave. Don't just run out of there. Go over there and read some of that stuff. It might help you. If nothing else, it'll help us understand a little more of what we do. And also, first-time visitors, if any others came in, if you would, meet over here by the cross. We have something we'd like to give you today. Is there anything else we need to share? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for Christ coming for our sins and dying for our sins on the cross. Father, I pray that you'd be with us throughout this week. And Father, that you would help us to remember who we are and who we serve. And Father, as we go out the doors of this building, help us to remember that we are entering into our mission field. And so, Father, we want to give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the decisions that were made today. Father, we lift them up to you. And these things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. And you're dismissed. <laughs>